I want to go ahead and talk about y'all's fave gospel artist, Miss Latasha Scott. Yeah. Yeah. One fourth of Escape, the owner of the name. Listen, Miss Latasha Scott, are you guys tired of me talking about her? Are you tired? Honestly, I'm kind of tired of talking about Latasha. I was going to spare her. I thought we were going to retire her and whatnot, but I was scrolling and trolling on Twitter and the girls were saying that she only sold 670 albums. 670 albums, sis. What have you been doing? All that promo, all that promotion, and you only sold 670 albums? Child, what the hell going on? And I usually wouldn't curse while talking about a gospel album, but it seems like the gospel album is cursed in itself. Listen, y'all need a season two. Let's get these album sales up. Y'all need a season two. Now, I'm going to put a pin in Latasha uh, for just a second. Uh, but speaking of a season two of the Queens of R&B, listen, Tamika Scott just went on to Claudia Jordan's show and basically was blaming Mona Scott Young for not promoting her businesses onto the show and blaming them for the drama. It was too much drama. It was too much this. And I was like, listen now, okay, Tamika, you're over victimizing yourself. Oop, I hit my nose. You're over victimizing yourself, sis, okay? I have been team Tamika since the very beginning. I've been believing you and I've been on your side. But sister girl, I know that you have made the 30K three times over since filming Wrapped. She's crying onto the show and whatnot and she wishes the best for her sister and she wants things to work out and whatever, whatever. I'm assuming that she's willing to forgive and all of those things. So it doesn't seem like the two have hashed it out since all of the drama has unfolded via social media and onto the show. But she then goes on to trash the show, talking about I would never do a season two. Too much drama. They didn't promote my businesses. And I'm like, hola, 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 hola. Because sister girl, let's not forget that the reason why Escape is so hot today is because of reality television. Let's not forget that the reason why Candy and Tiny have leverage over everybody. The reason why SWV uh, booking fee isn't as high as Escape is because of reality TV. Let's not forget that. I like this victim attitude, right? Y'all finna get on me for getting on Tamika because that's super unpopular. But listen, I have to tell it like how I see it. Sis, you really complaining? You really complaining? It was so much drama because you're the one who came out with the information that she started 30 k it started with you. Okay, listen, y'all gonna be mad. Like you saw Tiny, she was cooking out of my cookbook. They wouldn't mention it. She was using my seasonings. They didn't mention it. She made one of my drinks. They didn't mention it. I brought the seasonings to Taj. They didn't mention it. TLC and Bravo are the most popular reality television networks on TV right now. So any business coming across the screen, that's 30%, ma'am. And then she goes, oh, I don't want to do a season two. You think these people just going to promote your product just because you got to give Bravo a little bit more. You're going to have to give them a little bit more than just six episodes if you want them to promote them damn seasonings. I mean, I'm just saying. But I'm pretty sure that the seasonings have been doing really, really well since that video of her exposing the receipts and stuff like that, her exposing her sister. Let me see how many views that got. Let's see. The Real Tamika Scott YouTube. Uh, a video entitled Tamika Scott of Escape explains her side of the story for SWV and Escape 762,000 views. Tamika Scott episode two. Was that a threat? 176,000 views. Tamika Scott of Escape drops the receipt 686,000 views. Now that's $30,000 right there. YouTube pay good. That's $30,000 right there. That's 50 k right there, sis. Talking about, oh, I don't want to do it again. Yeah, too much drama. Okay, bye. Chabu chaba. Okay. Now, listen. Speaking of, back to the other sister. The other sister, Latasha Scott, they're saying that the album only sold 680 copies or so. And I came onto my platform about a week ago and I guesstimated that she would sell 400 in the first week. And so 
if these figures from Twitter are correct, then I was kind of right. My numbers were accurate. And I was only saying that because in pieces, Chloe Bailey only sold 10,000. And Chloe Bailey is 10 times more famous and 10 times more marketable and more relevant than Latasha Scott. So if Chloe Bailey, and not to mention, she's under Beyonce. So if Chloe Bailey sold a measly 10,000 copies of that damn album, then that would mean that Latasha Scott only sold a few hundred, less than a few hundred. So let me see. Shout out to Dustin Ross. He retweeted this. Latasha Scott's highly anticipated debut solo gospel album, The Invitation, A Conversation with God, sold 678 units in pure sales. The album from the Escape member has failed to chart on the Billboard 200 albums chart, but congratulations to Latasha nonetheless. And then uh, look at Dustin. Dustin Ross said, if this is true, God damn. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay, so l- let me read some more. Uh, Chris Evans wrote, Latasha Scott, blessed and highly favored member of Escape, who allegedly conspired with her husband to forge documents and steal royalties from her sister, Tamika, released her solo gospel album this week. It sold 600 plus copies and fell to chart on Billboard 200. Mm. Is this real? Are these real numbers? They sound about real. They sound about real, child. That sound about right. Okay, Motown, release the numbers. Release the numbers. Uh, okay. Here's another one. Ashley Miller from YouTube selling 678 records in two weeks. Oh, so that 600 number isn't the first week, but it's in two weeks, which would mean that my estimate of 400 in the first week was kind of correct, if this is true, T. Selling 678 records in two weeks has to be a blow to an inflated ego. Two weeks, the humbling. Okay, let the humility please kick in. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Okay, you can be redeemed, Latasha. Okay, God forgives. So confess, repent, and start the healing. Start the deliverance. You need to be like uh, Mr. Caldwell. What's his name? Andrew Caldwell. Delivered, Tony. You need to be delivered from the lies and the thievery, alleged thievery. All right, so moving right along, let's go ahead and talk about the fallout from the Don Lemon termination. Okay, yesterday I told y'all that Mr. Don Lemon did a whole episode of CNN this morning, and then right after he got back into the office from being on set, the agent called him up and said, Don, you're done. You don't have a job, buddy. A very unfortunate situation because y'all know I root for everybody black and I root for everybody gay and black. Well, I kind of root for everybody black. I don't root for Candace Owens and I don't root for Flame Monroe. Or Tasha K. Okay. So moving right along, Caitlin Collins and Poppy Harlow decided to get they fake asses. Okay, and yes, we going there. Caitlin Collins and Poppy Harlow decide to get they in authentic, disingenuous, fake asses up on the TV screen this morning to give Don Lemon a farewell message. I mean, if this isn't the most fakest shit I ever saw in my life. As you may have heard yesterday, CNN parted ways with anchor Don Lemon. In a statement, CNN CEO Chris Licht thanked Don for his contributions over the past 17 years, writing in part, Don will forever be a part of the CNN family. We wish him well, and we'll be cheering him on in his future endeavors. Absolutely. Of course, Don was a big part of this show over the last six months. He was one of the first anchors on CNN to have me on his show. That's something I'll obviously never forget. I agree with Chris. We wish him the best. Yeah, we certainly do. Don was one of my first friends here at CNN. I'm so thankful to have worked alongside him and for his support for nearly 15 years here, and I wish him all good things ahead. That was the fakest shit. Let me stop cursing. Don, Mr. Donnie Man, I apologize on their behalf. I mean, someone gives you 17 years. I mean, it's not like he said that there were fine people on both sides. It's not like he incited an insurrection at the damn Capitol. It's not like the man 
did a quid pro quo up there in Ukraine. It's not like he went on air every night or every morning after the demotion and spread these lies about the election child, talking about the election was stolen and that Dominion voting machines don't work. At least he didn't cause the network to be uh, in litigation regarding this lawsuit where Fox News now has to pay $800 million to the machine, the voting machines. And apparently a part of his firing, I guess the straw that brought the camel back is the fact that, you know, he told the Indian man on, um, it was an Indian man on the show. I think he's running for president. I think he's a Republican. The, the man, I believe he's Indian. Um, said that, you know, black people obtained all the rights that they needed to after the civil war which I think is the dumbest shit I ever heard. And so Don Lemon basically had to, you know, get in there and educate that fool. And I think he said something flippant like, um, how are you going to tell me as a black man about race and black people in America? And I think he said something crazy like, um, whatever race you are, like he was trying to refer to the other man's race and ended up saying whatever race you are. Like it was like a, a, a dismissive sort of comment about his race. So I think they're saying, New York Times is saying that that was the uh, straw that broke the uh, camelback child. And so, uh, but we know that this was coming. We know that the writings were on the wall. We knew that CNN was not really feeling it. And so just to watch Miss Poppy Harlow and Caitlin Collins talking about some, that was my best friend. Girl, you never had Don Lemon's back. In the six months that that damn show has been on, you ain't never had that man back looking at him sideways at every turn, looking at him sideways every time he would open up his mouth. Caitlin Collins overstepping and interrupting. And speaking of Caitlin Collins, child, we have another clip from Mr. Roland Martin because, child, when I tell you he went to hell in on Caitlin, it was a bullseye on his back. When he got moved That's from right. prime time to the morning, that wasn't no promotion. A show where he was the host to a show with three other hosts, one that got no business being next on the set, Caitlin Collins. Ooh. She ain't ready. She Ooh. ain't ready for prime time. She not, okay? She way too green, okay? She need to go back and get some more experience. Damn, how Dustin Ross said, God damn. Uh, Mr. Roland Martin said that Caitlin Collins ain't have no business being up there anyways. And honestly, whatchamacallit, Don Lemon, you should have left. You should have left after they wanted you to sit next to an inexperienced anchor by the name of Caitlin Collins. Now, Caitlin Collins, girl, you tried it. You ain't really have no business being upset with Don Lemon after you interrupt every sentence he tries to utter on that damn TV show. I mean, if anybody needs to be upset, it needs to be him. I don't blame Don Lemon for being a, a diva. You mean to tell me that I have a $6 million salary? I have my own primetime uh, show on one of the biggest cable news networks of all time, the cable news network. And then I get demoted to morning times and I have to sit next to Caitlin Collins, who doesn't even know how to be an anchor. She's used to being in the hot sun all day. You know, acting like paparazzi, trying to uh, get President Joe Biden to answer a question when he comes out the damn West Wing. OK, sister girl, you belong in the press room. You do not belong at the anchor's desk. If I was Don Lemon, I would have been upset. He should have quit after that. You should have left after that, Donnie. Oh. What is this? Candace Diller Bassett went to Twitter and said they've been ready to push out our cousin. Uh, it's strategic and sick and I hate it. Is Gail supposed to save the network because of what is happening? Mm. It's a mess. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about everything. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to create a great day.